Welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Come right this way to the Food for Thoughtcast with your host, Melissa Reagan. But you can call her chef. All right, let's get this episode started. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan. I'm joined by the official co-host of the Food for Thought cast, Chef Stephen Gonzalez. What's up, dude? Oh, uh, yeah. How's it going? <laughs> Great. How are you? I'm fantastic. What you got going on? Well, it is Thanksgiving. And at the time that this episode releases, I will be in Indianapolis working. And where will you be? I will be at home preparing a meal. All for right. all of two people. All of two people. You know what? Two people can put away a lot of food. Like We can, yeah. You have to throw that gauntlet down. You have to determine the expectations up front. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Well, um, I'd like to thank everybody, as usual, for tuning in. Um, I have to ask you the same, right? As every single episode, I want to know what the most amazing thing you ate this week was. So I actually just got back from uh, Philadelphia. And we ate our hearts content. Reading markets, one of my favorite things. But you know what? The best thing I ate was Jenny's ice cream. Have you ever had it? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> three, All right. So what kind? Three words. There you go. Boston cream pie. Really? Holy cow. Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love sweets, but I don't do a lot of ice cream. But that one, damn, I couldn't stop eating it. It's good. <laughs> did you kill a pint? You know what? I actually didn't. I was so full. I I ate as much as I could. And you know when you get just on that uh, verge of, like, getting sick, you're like, I got to yeah. stop? You're I like, stopped. there's a fine line between <laughs> I want to lay down for a nap and I'm going to throw up. <laughs> right? You're just, you're just putting food in your mouth. It's just kind of falling out because you're so full. He was like, ugh. But, but man, yes. I mean, that thing was, it was just amazing. Yeah. Well, what about you? I haven't, well, I haven't had the Boston cream pie flavor, but she uh, did release an everything bagel at one time that was cream cheese flavored ice cream, lightly sweetened. Dude. We almost got that too. Bro. But... It was so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, the most amazing thing I ate this week, uh, I went down to Good Friend Package. Uh, shout out to them. I had a French dip sandwich, but instead of Swiss, I got mm. their house made pimento cheese on it. Oh. And it was, it was killer. That just sounds amazing. It was, it was so good. They put a little caramelized onions on there. Their au is really good. So yes. I'm always a sucker for those sandwiches, to be honest. Highly recommend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they put up with all my shenanigans there too. Cause I've added peanut butter to almost every sandwich on the <laughs> menu and they don't even bat an eye anymore. So shout out to good from package. Nice. But yeah. <laughs> food destinations all right uh yeah i mean you have to you have to act like a tourist in your own neighborhood too but i'm so glad you got to go to philly did you have a philly cheesesteak i did um i went to the ready market and mm -hmm. and i had a philly cheesesteak there i think it was called like the, the ben franklin or something like that where it was like mm -hmm. cream cheese and mushrooms and onions and peppers yes. and the the ribeye steak, all that good stuff. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I got it the first time I went there and I was blown away. I did Pat's and Gino's and I mean, uh, it's all right, but you know, but the, well, yeah. I mean, there's a bit of a difference between like an Italian beef sandwich and a Philly cheesesteak, but oh, for yeah. my, for my money, it's got to have cheese was on it. <laughs> I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but you know, like, I, I don't know, maybe they just had an off day at Pat's and Gino's cause I did both back to back. Sure. And they were good. Man, that's a was, lot, though. Well, yeah, I mean, like, the sandwiches aren't that big. Or at least I don't think they are. And 
I mean, they, you, you know, like I just wasn't blown away by it. I mean, I'm not really fooling anybody. Anybody who actually knows me in person knows I could easily put away two sandwiches and probably a pint of ice cream. And I wouldn't even, <laughs> you know, have heartburn. But I mean, just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's like Jurassic Park. But um, yeah. yeah, you know, but. but uh, so there yeah. was one place. OK, I finally tried Scrapple for the first time. Oh, did you like it? Oh, dude, I loved it yeah, way so more than good. I thought I was going to. <laughs> I Yeah. I was excited for it when I saw it on the menu. And then when I tried it, I thought, oh, yeah. This is See, tell go everybody what Scrapple is. So it's it's a big mixture of like, isn't it traditionally like offal and stuff like that? And parts. like oats and cornmeal. And, mm -hmm. and they like make it into this loaf and they slice it and they, they either pan fry it and they deep fry it or something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, you can like, have it. <laughs> you can have yeah. it either way you can have it deep fried or you can have it like griddled um i like to personally this will probably make somebody mad on one side or the other but i like to think of scrapple as like the cadillac of spam um i could but it's it. better it's better than spam i said what <laughs> i said i don't care what you think <laughs> these are our thoughts hashtag don't thoughts. cancel us these are the thought cast um <laughs> i love scrapple though it's freaking delicious that's amazing yeah, I love that. I, one day I'll have to actually make it from scratch. But then, but it's like, like I said, isn't it traditionally like awful? Because I know like a lot of recipes I looked up, it was like uh, pork shoulder and stuff like that. And I mean, that's cool, but eh, I, were I like you trying it. to find out what was in it or were you going to make your own? I, I mean, I want both. I want to find out what's in it traditionally mm. and then I want to make it myself. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it, is it like oat, oatmeal that they throw in there or is it cornmeal? Like, I, I don't know. I've, I always I could have sworn it was oats or something like that that they threw in there. I think. All right. Well, I'm heading to the internet because like I don't <laughs> want to get it wrong. The well, classic, if, the classic if Pennsylvania. It that way it's true. Right. It'll be official and true, of course. Right. The classic <laughs> Pennsylvania Dutch treat made with liver, spices, cornmeal, and buckwheat. Thank so, you. Hog offal, such as the head, heart, liver, and other trimmings, or mm. as my mother would affectionately call parts as parts. Uh, mm -hmm. boiled with any bones attached to the meat is picked off and then formed into a loaf. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all Man, if that you. doesn't make care. you want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I will>. buddy. <laughs> sounds so I'm good. all about it. I, this stuff is good. It sounds pretty good right now. Spam. So Spam has is like pork and ham and Scrapple is named Scrapple because it's made of scraps. So... I mean, Thank it's you. all kind of scraps, but Thank you, Wikipedia. I, I like both, but I, I think Scrapple's a little bit. If you could call something that was a mixture, a loaf of parts more refined, I think it's more refined. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try to incorporate it into my Thanksgiving meal now. So there's that. Okay. In what way? I have no clue yet. Yeah. <laughs> Scrapple stuffing. There you go. Done. Oh, Bam. God. I have thoughts about this. Are you are you making anything new at Thanksgiving besides trying to put Scrapple into the meal? <laughs> well, my wife doesn't <laughs> know that I'm throwing Scrapple into the meal yet. <laughs> but when she finds out, she sent me a list to hold on. I gotta find it. Okay, so Thanksgiving 2023. Sliced Brussels sprouts baked in feta with balsamic glazed tart. Of course, the brine turkey. She wants mm -hmm. an apple bread pudding, spinach madeleine, cornbread, and sage sausage stuffing say that five times fast i can't even do it once i will not sir it, and it's of course entrapment. yeah i know right but I, i'm a little bit um disappointed because i'm expecting like the mac and cheese the sweet potato casserole the you know all that <clears throat> stuff i don't know right all right so she sent you the list is that the menu or will you both be cooking it or is it just for you to cook or what? Oh, just for me is to cook. Nosy? She's the idea. Oh, okay. She's the brains on the brawn. I got it. No, Whatever. you're smart too. It, it's just like those, the, the Bugs Bunny cartoons. Remember the, the mobsters where it's like, yes. shout out to you. Yeah. My mom, my, my wife hits me and goes, shout out to you. <laughs> I'm breaking up with new ideas. <laughs> I don't believe that, but okay. I know. Um, all right. So cornbread, <laughs> Stuffing with sausage. And now Scrapple. And now Scrapple. 
Yes. Dude, but, I, I'm so, going to throw... Cornbread stuffing when you grew up. Did Was this part of Thanksgiving? I, I think there was a handful of years that we did cornbread stuffing. It was more of the traditional breadcrumbs, you know, like like the uh, this, the Pepperidge Farms and all that kind of stuff. So it was bread stuffing, but not like the cornbread, what we no, would I don't, call the I South think it was cornbread. I, right. I can remember for many years I was turned away from stuffing just because of the way it looked. And sure. I remember celery. Be, I mean, obviously there's always celery in it, you know, like your good mirepoix. And celery is not my thing or wasn't my thing. And I would but you know better it. now, right? Oh, yeah. No, I like it now. <laughs> All right. I have to make a very important that it has. We have to specify. Stuffing goes inside the turkey and dressing goes in its own pan. I said what I said. Stuffing so. goes in the turkey. <laughs> well, <You> know, <laughs> I don't know. We're going to get clapped back. But you know what? Like in the South, we call it cornbread dressing for a reason. It doesn't go in the turkey. because You didn't well, stuff it anywhere. So it's not stuffing. I I I just use the two very very loosely. <laughs> that's a mean just, dressing and stuffing are the same I, thing. <laughs> and, and for a lot of people, it is. I'm just giving you a hard time. So for me, I, I don't like to put the, I don't like to stuff the turkey because you're going to pull juice out of the turkey. I would rather put aromatics in the turkey to flavor it while it's cooking. Well, see, I I still kind of go off of the whole like if you stuff a turkey. And you got to cook it to like 165 or mm -hmm. 160 and then let it carry over. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you got to let the, the stuffing itself get hot and then your turkey's dry and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah. I, it's, I, so it's either go through the process twice, right? You got to cook the stuffing before you put it in the turkey in order to not overcook and dry out the turkey. Or it's like, okay, well, you, and then you just put it in a pan and cook it by itself and it's dressing. Or, you know? <laughs> man... And they just don't make sous vide bags that big. Otherwise, I would stuff the whole, like I would stuff a turkey and and cryo vac and then sous vide it for like two days. Mm. You know, mm. I, you could, could do be, that, right? It could, yeah. I think it could be tasty. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm not on the sous vide. I, nah. There are some things that should be sous vide. There are some things that are not. <laughs> Turkey's not one of them, but that would still be badass. To sous vide a whole turkey. And I know people have done it, but I haven't. I've seen a lot of things sous vide that shouldn't have been. A lot more than should have. I'll just put it that way. So listeners and viewers, if you don't know what sous vide is, um, it's where you cook food in a sealed, a vacuum sealed plastic pouch, um, typically in a hot water circulator. It's water science. Pouch. It is. It is science. And it's really cool for some things. And just like anything else, Man, it got into the wrong hands sometimes too, and then people started acting right. full. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, if you get people like <laughs> us who just want to eat any and everything. All right. So, what was on your Thanksgiving table growing up? I, I want to know. It was a lot of the traditional, you know, the turkey, the ham, the sweet potato casserole, the mashed potatoes, the uh, green bean casserole, uh, the pumpkin pie, the the cranberries or the canned cranberries, um, gravy. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't. I'm pretty sure there was more, but you know. Okay, so I, I have. About you. I have questions. Well, a lot of the same, right? But every family is going to have the things they like and the things they don't. So, what goes on the ham? Just so H E B always has the the glazed hams, like the brown mm -hmm. sugar hams and all that kind of stuff. So we just always went with that. Kept it simple. So more to the sweet side. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind it, but. Eh. I like as an adult, I find that I like more of the the salty, like the country style ham. I can see that, yeah. Yeah. Um, in the South, obviously, there's a lot of Coca Cola going on hams, <laughs> unless you're smoking right. them. So or you just go. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and do rum ham. Mm -hmm. Dude, Smart. there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with like some rum, brown sugar, raisins. Uh, let it make a syrup. You know? <laughs> no, you just let it soak in ham and that's it. You just eat it. <laughs> it's already cooked. You just heat it up and you just get drunk in the process. <laughs> I don't I don't drink rum, but yeah. <laughs> but if I did, right? If maybe if I did. Uh also so you said sweet potato casserole. Is it marshmallows or is it praline topping or something else? We always it was kind of a give and take, but or like one year we do marshmallows and then my mom started doing the, the praline pecans and all that stuff. And it was good. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, 
if we went to a, like a family member's house, it was usually the marshmallows. My mom liked to adventure out yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. So my mom doesn't like the sweet potatoes with the marshmallows. Um, so as a kid, the only time I would get those was at the at hot lunch at school. And it was always really something to look forward to, even though, you know, at school they were just using like canned sugary Sam's, like draining a number 10 can of the sugary Sam's, what they call yams, which they're not everybody. Thank you. But they're just sweet potatoes. <laughs> but a yam is the size of my arm and it's a starchy thing that's grown in the Caribbean and doesn't taste like sweet potatoes. Okay. Okay. Right. But yeah. Um, and so but they're still good. They, dude, they are amazing, but a lot of people in America have never had a yam ever. And so, you know, so yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, she does like a pecan streusel topping and it's freaking delicious. So don't get me wrong, but man, I like marshmallows on it too. I like that stuff. Yeah. Did you I have like mashed potatoes? We did. And it's funny because after I started working in restaurants, I remember one year I was taught like, to throw egg yolks in your mashed potatoes and it'll give it that nice uh, yellowish kind of tint, but it makes it like yeah. 10 times more rich. Yeah. And I did that for my family one time and they thought it was so strange at first. And then they tried the mashed potatoes and they said, this is really good. See, the key is you got to have to banish everybody from the kitchen. So they can't be like, why are you doing that? What is that? Why'd you put that in there? That's the worst. I feel, no, you know what? Like I, I was very fortunate to where like my family, they didn't question it. They, they felt like, oh, he went to culinary school. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> did, did you get that a lot too? It oh, well, depended on, it she depended knows on which doing. on which and who, whose right. house and everything else. Um, I I've worked so many Thanksgivings that there really hasn't there hasn't not been a um there hasn't really been a Thanksgiving where I was responsible for a majority of the cooking or all of the cooking. I think there's maybe even one. Um, so. Now now, yeah. did you ever have, like, did your family do fried turkey, roasted turkey, or smoked turkey? So not fried turkey, but roasted and smoked, for sure. So Yeah, we always did a, the roasted turkey. I don't think we ever smoked it. Any other meats at Thanksgiving or just turkey and ham? Just turkey and ham. I don't think we ever did. No, I don't think we ever did really did anything else. Yeah. What about uh, breakfast on Thanksgiving or not? So I always did breakfast and I, my mom would always say, you have to just have a little bit because of course we're going to have this big old meal and I always still overdid it anyways. <laughs> and uh, so I'd have like, you know, two, possibly three giant meals that day. And uh, you know, like the way you feel after just exerting a lot of energy mm -hmm. and you're exhausted and all you want to do is take a nap and, you know, forget that you're alive. <laughs> yeah, that was I'd say I felt like I ran a marathon, but I've never ran a marathon. So I just was so tired and exhausted. My <laughs> my Thanksgivings got very, they were very disjointed as the years went on. So that's not to say anything bad. It's just usually I was working or traveling or, um, yeah. you know, lived out of the city or whatever. And so, um, but when I was growing up and my grandmother still cooked Thanksgiving in, in the house that I grew up in, we would usually have like maybe biscuits and bacon or like biscuits and eggs and bacon. And then she would have always made like two or three batches of biscuits the week leading up because the biscuits would go into the, the cornbread dressing. Oh, that sounds so, awesome. Cause you kind of like let them stale out and yeah, you know, so I have like very fond memories of sitting on my grandmother's lap and helping to mix the dressing in like a huge um, Tupperware bowl. My mom will have to help me out after this episode. I think it was purple. It's a big purple plastic bowl. So. <laughs> so so let me ask you this like when your parent when your mom listens does she ever tell you that never happened i don't remember that story no it's usually just like hey i liked i listened and i liked it it was really funny and then the other day she was like yeah and i like candy corn so there <laughs> <laughs> candy corn will never go away we will it's talk about so candy good. corn in almost every podcast even okay. in the summer I think my dislike of pumpkin comes from her and also my early dislike of blueberries. Um, so they say imitation is like the, the most sincere form of flattery. Um, so if I wanted to be like her as a kid, those were the things that, you know, I ended up not liking at first. And then um, we always had uh, deviled eggs. Did you guys do deviled eggs on Thanksgiving? No, we never did. I, I honestly never really had a deviled egg until I was in my 20s, I think. 
God, I'm sorry. That's super sad. <laughs> well, I never thought about it. You know, they're like, so delicious. Yeah, they are. Well, we put boiled eggs in the cornbread dressing, uh, and so we always had them around. Um, so we would make deviled eggs, and then a big thing at, at my house growing up was uh, homemade pimento cheese, where you uh -huh. like grated grated the cheese by hand, and we would stuff it into celery sticks. And we always had like mm. a relish tray, so we like you know pickles and olives and um stuffed celery but you would never ever see in my mother's house and you still won't you would never ever see like peanut butter in a celery stick ever hmm. ever i'm the big peanut butter eater and she's like nope <laughs> like, i don't like yeah. peanut butter i just don't eat it as much mm -hmm. as i want to does that make sense yeah sure i eat it way more than i should I probably way more than should be legally allowed <laughs> to be quite honest uh, green bean casserole is that the traditional cream of mushroom fried onions yeah. type business? Well, I seeing as how I'm not a big green bean person, I do Brussels sprout casserole now. But growing up, yeah, I I ate the green bean casserole. I just I I don't know. I think it's because it was so covered up with all the cream of mushroom how soup you, and all that. How that, do you like Brussels sprouts better than green beans? What's wrong with you? Uh, because I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I think. I'd say it's a, I guess it's a texture thing. I really couldn't tell wow. you. Wow. Oh. All the green beans, though, like cut short green beans and like Harry Covers and flat Italian broad bean, like green beans and like all of it. I, I just not a fan of it. I don't know. I'm just, I know I'm fascinated. Even bacon, even with bacon. So they, ha I have to taste the bacon more than the green beans. I think that's what it is. Mm. And you have to throw a lot of like onions, caramelized onions. And garlic and, and, garlic. and well, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> <laughs> what about fried green beans? I can, I mean, I can do it, but it's not the, it's not on the top of my list. So know? it's not, it's not that it's a green vegetable because you like Brussels. Oh, fries. I love green vegetables. They're, they're good. And, and but anyone it's just the specific who knows me flavor? might call, say I'm, I'm calling bullshit, but I do like green vegetables. I like broccoli, <laughs> I like Brussels sprouts. Uh, th those are the two main ones I'll eat. You so know? you said greens, I like all that stuff. You know, you said that you make Brussels sprouts casserole. Casserole, yeah. I just sub the, the green beans for Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts yeah. I should Brussels. Say. Yeah. Uh, the same way though. Yeah, pretty much. Dude, okay, that kind of sounds good. Maybe. Okay. What what I what I <laughs> really want to try is. Uh, air frying the Brussels sprouts to where like they're on the verge of like just burnt. That way, when you bake it all off, like with the cream of mushroom soup and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you still get a little bit of a crunch. But I know you really won't. I don't know. So you won't you won't blanch them at all, right? You'll spit no. them straight into the, you'll like cut them in half. Do you take the little root end off? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like yeah. them shaved more than anything else. But so uh, the dressing the stuffing however you like to call right what is it what is it that goes in yours for for the stuffing and dressing you said mm -hmm. hmm <coughs> excuse me i like a little bit of everything i the you know the mirepoix the garlic of course the breadcrumbs i like a lot of herbage like uh rosemary thyme i'll do a little bit of sage i'm not a big sage person but i i will throw a little bit in there just to kind of uh, balance out all that flavor. Um, yeah. Of course, I, I prefer white pepper over, over black pepper in my stuffing. Sure. Um, and I try to, I try to use, you know, like your traditional chicken broth or beef broth and stuff like that. But it all depends on what I have lying around more than anything else. Really. You take the juice from the turkey at all? I usually don't because I'll use that juice to make my gravies. Sure. Because by that point you're like, well, I need to, I need to now to make my my stuffing mm -hmm. now, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then cranberry sauce, yes or no? I wait the jellied the the canned stuff that's or like question. making it at home. That's huh? the question. Yeah, yeah. I'll do both. Yeah, I don't care. My wife loves the canned cranberry, and it's and I don't care what anyone says. It's good, but I don't mind making it from scratch either. And I'll make Dude. it more like a chutney style, you know. I used to open a can at like when it wasn't Thanksgiving and eat it as dessert. It's so good. I don't That's care. Right. I don't care. In the 1920s, that was made popular by Marcus, Marcus Uran. And he went on to found the ocean spray company. 
Um, but in the first Thanksgivings, right, they would have had cranberries, uh, but they would have been facing a sugar shortage. So they wouldn't have had any way to make them palatable. They probably had I was apples. Say, do you like raw cranberries or like actual no, cranberries? No, hell no. They're, oh, they're terrible. I thought it was just me all these years. No, but they're so, it takes so much <laughs> sugar to make them taste good, which is why I'm like, look, if we're talking about nutrition and you're worried about the sugar that's in a can of full berry or jellied, you know, cranberry sauce. Some people just don't like the texture and some people are against cans altogether. I totally get it. Right. But if you're just talking about like, Oh, it has too much sugar, dude, you ever tasted an unsweetened raw cranberry? Good Lord. It's terrible. Yeah. It's like a punishment. You just want to cut your tongue off. It's like yeah. the amount of, um, bitterness in it? The, the, well, yeah the amount of like acid that's in there the bitterness the that tart. i don't even get acid out of it i just get bitter as soon as i taste it like a raw one i'm like ugh, no it's oof. i want to come up with some sort of dessert though with the canned cranberry like like some sort of like use that and have like some sort of uh creme anglaise or something like that and and some sort of badass like pastry I don't, I don't, I don't know where, where I'm going with it yet, but I got to figure something out. I think um, you didn't ask me, but I'm going to tell you what I think. I want to hear your uh, two cents. I, <laughs> I think that in a shallow um, tart pan, you could get away with a um, frangipan on the top or bottom of uh, the whole berry cranberry sauce. You could probably not, fortify it with a little cornstarch. Oh, that sounds good, you but know? it's not. I don't know this friend Japan you speak of. I have always known oh. it as Frankie Pain. It's Frankie Pain. <laughs> <laughs> Do you Frank remember that? I remember Frank that from school night. Like, I, <laughs> I remember. Uh, oh, we were so stupid. <laughs> uh, I, what do you mean were? I was, oh, same. But you, you said that and I was like, if you're going to tell me right now in front of all the three people that watch this thing, <laughs> that you don't know what French is, I was like, I'm going to lose right now. No, it's right Frangipane. It's Frangipane. Frangipane. <laughs> Not a Rangipane. I'm going to make it a Rangipane. Oh, no, I, I remember Miles said that and it just stuck with me. Like for the rest of my life, it's going to stick with me. So For real. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know, frangipan is a sweetened almond custard. It kind of looks like, before you cook it, it kind of looks like hummus is the best way to describe it. Yeah. And it is yeah. really, really tasty. And it, it just bakes into this kind of like crumbly deliciousness. I haven't so, made it since I was probably like 19 or 20. I haven't made it since a grade depended on it. <laughs> really. I, I, but I'll eat it. I will eat it. There's a couple of bakeries in town who will use it. And I'm like, yes, if I see this in the description, I'm buying it. You know what I would probably do is make some sort of like donut and then stuff it with like that cranberry and creme anglaise or something like that. Like, you know what I'm well, saying? Just like, take it a step further and cook it into a pastry cream, I think would be like really tasty. You that know? or, or with like the Boston cream pie, like cream. Oh, yeah. So what you're saying is you're going to make, Cranberry Boston cream pie donuts. So what I'm saying is <laughs> I am prepared to lose two toes. <laughs> Not just one. Um, That's a two toe right there. <laughs> one, so one thing, one thing that I've done before is I have mixed the whole berry cranberry sauce into flan base and creme brulee wow. base. And it's, it works well both ways. Um, you know, it doesn't have enough. There's no like weird component in there that affects how the custard works in other words right you know how pineapple will keep you know gelatin from doing the right job or you know if you yeah. put too much you know xyz fruit into whatever it doesn't work but cranberry is not one of those things and it's already um cooked and canned so it doesn't have any like ill effects on like the science part of the baking um, the other thing I do with it is you're going to hate this. Maybe you'll what? hate it. I don't know, but it's. Uh, it's unless funny. you say you put it with green beans and, and celery, <laughs> then I'll hate you. So um, there's this recipe I like to make called salsa berry chicken. Uh, it's not even a recipe. I can't even justify They might come take my chef card away for this. I don't know, but I like it and I don't care. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's paste picani sauce and whole berry cranberry <laughs> sauce. On top of chicken lie, in the crock pot. That doesn't sound bad at all. It's so good. And then you just shred the chicken up and eat it over rice. And I don't care. 
I was going to say, I feel like parts. if you mix like a little bit of some, <laughs> like some sort of brie or something like that mm. to like cream all that up. Holy crap. That sounds like it would probably be good. If, if you took like whole berry cranberry sauce and uh really hot hatch green chili and you mix it together and put it over a bar of cream cheese and you had a box of triscuits, like I wouldn't be mad at that. So, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> so when I used to sell stuff with uh, my employer, I used to work mm-hmm. like in little kiosks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there was a brand that had a cran raz sauce. Yeah. And everybody would come up to me and say, you know, if you, you could put this over cream cheese. <laughs> I mean, after the millionth time of hearing that. You're like, Obvious man says obvious things. At first, I was like, yeah, yeah, you can totally do it. And, and after a while, it's like, what? I never thought about doing that. What are you talking about? No. And, yeah. But yeah, or that or people would be like, you could just put it over baked brie. It's like, is there going to be puff pastry involved? Or are you just heating up brie and putting that on top? Because, you know, you got to take it a step further than that. Come on. I don't like when people bake. Like, I see all those TikTok videos go by. Um about like baking a wheel of brie or camembert and they they leave the rind on top and i'm like what are you what are you doing right now you need to prepare this a little bit like i don't i don't know i mean i just eat it straight out of the wrapper but <laughs> that's just me ain't nothing wrong with that either ain't nothing wrong with that either down it with some heavy cream heck yeah all right so are you the pumpkin pie guy cheesecake you said you know, apple bread pudding. Is it a different thing uh, every Thanksgiving or what? Well, let's start with the initial question at hand. Pumpkin pie and I are very fond of one another. I used to love it when I was a kid. I think I liked it more for the whipped cream than anything else. But um, <laughs> I, I still liked it, you know? Yeah. And then I slowly started turning to the pecan pie. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They're, they're both really good. But I, I mean, mm-hmm. it's one or the other. I And then I started turning to like the pumpkin cheesecake because I don't like pie crust. I mean, I like pie crust, but like, I just, I don't know. I, I'm weird. So what about you? Pie, pumpkin pie, pecan pie. So not pumpkin pie. Um, I probably every couple of years will get a piece of pumpkin pie. That's like this wide. So for those of you who are listening to this, I'm holding up a ballpoint pen. I mean, a sliver of (laughs) of pumpkin pie and covered in a half of a tub of Cool Whip. Yes. I said Cool Whip. I don't care what anybody thinks about that. It's freaking delicious. Um, so that I didn't have to taste it. Right. Um, it's kind of silly though. What a waste of good Cool Whip. And then, um, (laughs) I like, I like pecan pie, but there's like, there's nothing there's nothing about pecan pie to me that says this is overtly Thanksgiving food. Like I could eat pecan pie whenever. Right. True. Um, but as a kid, we always had, and my aunt still does make buttermilk pie for Thanksgiving, which is uh, the Southern play on chess pie. So it just has a little bit less eggs in it. Uh, really, really, really good custard pie. And then my grandmother's carrot cake. Um, that's a Thanksgiving standard. So uh, while everybody's listening to this, it's likely that I'll be lying in a hotel room having ordered pizza for Thanksgiving in Indianapolis. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean I've gone to go have mm-hmm. dumplings for Thanksgiving before. There's no judgment. Oh, oh yeah, no. I mean, people can judge away. I'm gonna have a great time with my feet up, not doing a dang thing. <laughs> that's, more, that's more the important thing is that you're not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. So, any any special cakes, cookies, pies from growing up, or was it always like kind of the same stuff? It was pretty much the same stuff. And then you get Mm -hmm. like the uh, powdered sugar cookies and all, you know what I'm saying? Like the wedding, like a wedding cookie? Kind of. Yeah. Like, like the, um, the shortbread shortbread? and all that kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. I mean, dude, I could eat my weight in those cookies. (laughs) You know, (laughs) they're good. good. They really are. But I was more about that pumpkin pie than anything else. Yeah. yeah, I, and then, like I said, I, I started making it more into a cheesecake than anything else because I like it that way. Yeah, yeah. But there's something about my cheesecakes. Like, every time I make them, they're so light. And I, I, I'm i like, this is going to be dense. It's going to fill me up. <laughs> and good. And then, like, it's not that I'm disappointed that I make a very light and airy cheesecake, but I'm like, ugh. I have to let this settle some more. So I'm doing something wrong. You know, off air, we're going to have to compare cheesecake recipes because I have one cheesecake recipe from my grandmother uh, was a praline 
cheesecake recipe. And hardly anybody makes it for family gatherings anymore because we do have mm. uh, one person who has a nut allergy. Um, so, but this cheesecake got hit with a little maple syrup on top. Um, and this thing was heavy enough to break a window. So maybe we can figure out what the formula, I mean, I'm not saying it was bad. It was delicious. I'm just saying maybe we can figure out off air what the formula is to make a heavy cheesecake. <laughs> so, Lots of love. But I, I'm Lots a really big fan cheese. of like the Italian style cheesecake too. That's got the ricotta in it. I love that. Oh, dude, I'd be all, I never, even, I forgot all about that. I should it's do good. that. It's really good. It's really, yeah. really good. I, I like ricotta. I can just eat ricotta cheese like out of the tub. I don't care. I uh, like same. Um, same. Well, I would like to play a little game with you. You're up for a game? Are you ready to play the game? Are you ready to play a game? Heck yeah, let's do this. All right. So we're going to call this um, Thanks or No Thanks. That's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> Celery pie, no thanks. <laughs> Green Celery beans, pie. no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Green beans with extra dill, no thanks. <laughs> Turkey covered in cumin. And Steve's like, what, what game is this? Uh, shoot, I was about to say, snorting a lot of cumin. No thanks. <laughs> okay, so I have a small list of some regional Thanksgiving dishes, and I want to know thanks or no thanks. Ready? Okay. Apparently, <clears throat> it is not Thanksgiving in Baltimore, Maryland, without some sauerkraut on the table, thanks to the large German-American population of Maryland. Sauerkraut at Thanksgiving. Thanks or no thanks? No thanks. Yeah, no thanks. Pass. Also, uh -huh. crab cakes, Chesapeake Bay, Baltimore. Crab cakes at Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks. I would like no crab word. cakes at Thanksgiving. Crab cake stuffing. Oh, God, yeah. that sounds so good. <laughs> what about corn on the cob at Thanksgiving? A lot of people will say thanks. I'll say no thanks. Yeah, I'll say no thanks. The corn can stay in the summer where it belongs. <laughs> I was going to say, um, if it's green corn, then I'd say thanks. Uh, maybe. You know, so I didn't grow up with it. Not in the, not in the house that I grew up in, but at my aunt's house, uh, when they gather for Thanksgiving, they do corn casserole. Have you had this stuff? I, I've had it before. I, I haven't had it enough to like dissect the recipe and all that. But yeah, I've yeah. Had it. it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, so sometimes in the South, there's variations of this, and it's called spoon bread. Um, actually, that's not true. It would be, it would be like spoon bread, corn bread, um, but that's still kind of different. It's more like of a drop biscuit thing. But but anyway, uh, kind of the run of the mill um, corn casserole is jiffy cornbread mix, cream corn, whole kernel corn, sour cream, and eggs, and there might be some milk in there. Ooh, um, yeah. It's really tasty. It's just, you know, my mom didn't eat corn. She still doesn't. We didn't have it. Um, I'll eat it, though. I didn't, really, it I didn't really eat a lot of corn, but I definitely listened to a lot of corn. <laughs> hey. Ah. Freak on a leash. Um, all right. So uh, hasty pudding. Do you know what hasty pudding is? No, I don't. Let's learn. All right. So in New England, hasty pudding is a delicious simple dessert made with cornmeal molasses brown sugar and spices so it's basically a hot dessert porridge and it's topped with whipped cream or ice cream thanks or no thanks i'd say thanks yeah same uh there's a variation on this dessert called indian pudding um and it is really delicious so yeah oh God, yeah dude I'm, I'm all about it tasty also pudding. right <laughs> that's also Tasty. Yes, tasty pudding. I was going to um, say, also, it like a nickname for my wife. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> also in like, New what? England, it's like everybody's just... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Um, also in New England, stuffing is made with clams or oysters instead of just breadcrumbs. Is this thanks or no thanks? Thanks. My uh, my family does that too. They do the oyster stuffing. Really? Are any yeah, of them from the North? No, but I I don't know where they got that from. I I, I mean, obviously somewhere from, someone from the north, but huh. tell you. that's super interesting. I um, forgot all about that until you just said that right now. <laughs> Still, I've, thanks. I've had yeah. stuffed clams. Um, I 
I'm slightly allergic to oysters. Like I can get to like oyster number six and start to go, mm, <laughs> maybe no more. Um, yeah. But I would throw down if it was made with something else, like mussels or or clams. You know. I do that. So too, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Uh, what about creamed onions? Apparently, this is a huge deal in the north. Creamed I've never onions. Had creamed onions, but that sounds pretty good. Okay, I say I like thanks. Onions. You say thanks. Yeah, thanks. Oh yeah. All right. Next up, going farther to the east coast, um, some New York and New Jersey Thanksgivings include Italian dishes like manicotti. So thanks or no thanks. Since I love manicotti, I'll say thanks. N me too. Um, <laughs> I feel like, I, like huh? go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I feel like I'd be throwing out a wild card right there with that one, but still, I'd be all about it if I saw it. Yeah, I mean, so. I'm reading an article from insider.com and it's talking about regional Thanksgiving dishes. And so what it's saying is that um, New Jersey and parts of New York happen to have large populations of Italian Americans. Um, and so in these families, before the turkey is served, there might be like a meze course, like a pasta course. So I ain't mad at right. that. So not I, at all. I'd be about that. So yeah, I'd say thanks. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much. I would like, three different kinds of pasta in addition to turkey. That's what I want. Right. Um, what about fried turkey? Thanks or no thanks? Eh, thanks, I guess. It's not the, uh, it's cool. I, I'm going to say no thanks. I, I think there's so many better ways you can cook a turkey, to, to be True. fair. Yeah, to be fair. Um, all right, turkey tamales as a leftover after Thanksgiving. Thanks or oh, no yeah. thanks? Thanks. Oh, yeah. Any you know tamales. what? I... I just also did like a uh, leftover Thanksgiving, like croque madame. And I mm. have to say that was pretty good. Oh, man. Yes. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. A huge fan. Well, I think I know what you're going to say to the next one, but sausage in stuffing. Thanks or no thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What kind of sausage are you going to put in your stuffing this year? I like breakfast sausage personally. Yeah. Like, I just keep it simple. Like a like a regular savory kind or like a maple kind. Regular savory. Mm -hmm. Regular I like savory. It. Yeah, I can see that. I like a chicken and apple sausage too in a sausage stuffing, but I'm more apt to make that kind of um, dressing or stuffing, whatever you like to call it. Right. I'm I'm kind of. It's more common that I'm going to make that when it's not Thanksgiving. Just because we grew up with just cornbread dressing. Yeah. All right, we have to move into the Midwest. You know, all the places where they make salad with all the things that don't go on salad. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like like a spaghetti and chili? Mm, kind of, but this is more like those uh, ambrosia salads and things with Cool Whip and Jello and pineapple <laughs> and marshmallows. Oh and yeah, the good stuff. I'm I'm here for all of those things. But have you ever heard of frog eye salad? Frog eye salad? No, but I'd be about it. <laughs> well, there's no frog or eyes in it, but it's made with a chini de pepe pasta. So the teeny tiny little pastas that look kind of like couscous. And it has pineapples, mandarin oranges, Cool Whip, and marshmallows. What do you think? I'd be about that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I, I say thanks. I will eat all those monstrosity things that have. I, I'm here for all the Watergate salad, the pink stuff, the pink fluff, the green stuff, the green junk, oh, good, the, yeah. all the things like. Even the cottage cheese, pineapple, lime, jello. Biz uh, yeah, I want it. I want all of it. <laughs> I'd be all <laughs> I about that, you, yeah. Dude, they're, they're going to come take my chef card, but I, I don't really care. Nah. Um, pumpkin empanadas in New Mexico. Thanks or no we, thanks? We've, we have that all year round. Thanks. I know, right? Yeah, thanks. I don't know why Arizona, apparently Arizona Zona and New Mexico make this just a Thanksgiving thing, but I'm like, why? I'm not going to lie. I've been craving that. I haven't had them for a while, but I've been craving that with like my coffee in the mornings. Really? It sounds I'm, good. So if it's going to be an empanada, I'm a huge fan of like, you can have pumpkin. I'm going to have sweet potato. And then I like uh, guava. It's kind of like my favorite. Empanada. I don't mind guava. It's good so, stuff. Yeah. I like it too. I like pineapple as well. So green bean casserole, you say thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> thanks with the side of no. Thanks. thanks for the side of no thanks. Way to be. Yeah. I'm kind of ambiguous on that one. I don't know. Uh, in the Midwest, wild rice casserole made with mushrooms, pecans, and onions. 
thanks Same. or no thanks. Yeah. I agree about that. Yeah. Thanks. Dude, you can have it. Wild rice, because it is not really rice, has a strange texture to me, and you can't cook it far enough for it to be done. Like, I, like I'll eat it. If, if, if I was at somebody's house, right, and we were in Wisconsin, and they were like, and they were like, you know, here's wild rice casserole, I'd be like, okay, great. And I would <laughs> eat it to be polite, but yeah. I would totally do it. Yeah, I might try it. It's just not my favorite. Okay. So, also in Wisconsin, they say cheddar mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. Thanks or no thanks? I would, they'd have to be, what kind of cheddar? Sharp cheddar? <laughs> Was, is, Wisconsin cheddar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I'd be about it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. What about sweet potato pie? I'd be about that too. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you eat that often or is Not it just something often. that you've tried a couple times? I've had it a handful of times. And I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it a lot too. Uh, mac and cheese. Does it belong at Thanksgiving? Yes, it does. Yes. I, that's a thanks. Yeah. That's a big thanks on that one. I like all of the Southern, you know, collard greens, sweet potatoes, um, you know, okra in our family growing up too we had turnips so i i realized that's not you know a usual thing for everybody's family but i i love all those things so i do too do you know there's, what go ahead let's say there's very few things that i don't like when it comes to thanksgiving so yeah i mean easy to please there are a few things i think that have to be a part of thanksgiving but also, I think there should be some like progressive things at your table. Um, Such you as trying new things. Well, nothing too crazy, but you should just try something new every year, right? Like, I don't know. You might define find new. I, I'm confused. Like, do you mean like some sort of like new to your family? So instead of if you have a Caesar salad every year, like maybe try some kale in it one time. If you have a cornbread dressing every year, like maybe try a different a different bread dressing, right? Or if you have turkey every year, like maybe offer a different kind of meat. You know, that's all. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but I like to have something different sometimes too. Yeah, you know? I can see that. Yeah, you know. I can totally see that. Like, I mean, I, people people get people get like really used to what their traditions are and, you know, what they like to have. But sometimes you have to, you never know if you like something without trying it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can see that. I mean, I I, I get the uh, tradition of Thanksgiving, and and granted, we do lose a lot of like what the the intention are is about behind Thanksgiving. But at the same time, it's like like every, everyone that I know does the same thing year in year out, and that's fine. But I like I don't know. I like to change it up, like you were saying. Like I've never my, like the menu that I was telling you earlier. My wife was saying, oh, we could do it as a tart. And I'm thinking, no, we got to change it up. But we got to <laughs> do it like a, like a galette and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And it just sounds like it has to be like that, you know. And, and so she goes, I think one of them was what, like an apple bread pudding or something like that. And I was like, no, we yeah. should, it needs to be done this way and this <laughs> way. And, you know. I mean, so. I do I do have some, some steadfast opinions. Uh Really, the most rigid that I'm going to be is that you should gather with people you love if that's what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have to be family because sometimes family is who you choose. And sometimes, you know, friends are family as well. And then yeah. just just be thankful and eat good food. And whatever it looks like to you, then that's the right thing. You know? I agree. Kind of sounds yeah. cliche, but it's like, eh, don't put so much emphasis on. Uh, but, if you have, you but if you Walmart have, like, cards. huh? I said, I didn't know you wrote Hallmark cards. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're that nonsense. I didn't. Uh, those <laughs> opinions just make me a pariah in a bunch of places. But, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just like, if you, but if you have something traditional, do it well and enjoy doing it. And if you're in the mood to make a new tradition, then do that. Because sometimes traditions are overrated. We, we just do them because we think we're supposed to and they become rote. Don't do that. Yeah. Now, you know? now when, whenever you have to make your Thanksgiving meal... And everyone's mm -hmm. relying on you to do it. How are you preparing it? Are you preparing it with music? Are you preparing it with a cocktail? Both? <laughs> are you telling everyone to yes. 
basically get the hell out of your kitchen before you stab <laughs> them or are you accepting of their help? So um, I'm not the person to banish everybody from the kitchen, but typically, you know, you and I are trained chefs. So it's like, I mean, you can help if it makes you feel better, but we don't really need it. I don't know if you find that to be true. Um, I don't know. I don't, it sounds like such a crappy thing to say too, but it, it doesn't come from a place of like not being grateful or, or not wanting somebody to feel like they're participating. Right. But it's like, also, yeah, I know how to prioritize 18 dishes all at once. Now, like I told you, I think I only really hosted one time. Um, yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. I, usually I, mean, I have, a, I have, have a cocktail in hand and I, I have music blasting and, um, I'm prepping. Usually I'm like going to somebody's house for Thanksgiving and I'm prepping whatever I'm making a couple of days before. Yeah. So, yeah. What kind of music are you, are you blasting? Uh, it's, it's Christmas music. <laughs> Is it Mariah Christmas? Mariah it's, Carey Christmas? No. So it's not Christmas music every year. Sometimes I'll get in the mood for it. If I'm thinking about Thanksgiving, uh, usually it's classic rock. It's usually like with my Pandora or Spotify, it's going to be like the Leonard Skinner channel or, um, or it's going to be like Dave Matthews, John Mayer. It's usually guitar driven. It's what I like to listen to. Gotcha. When I cook. So, yeah. What about you? I usually just play a lot of death metal, like a lot of yeah. like <laughs> like uh, Black Dolly Murder, Cannibal Corpse, some Slayer. And is there like, Thanksgiving themed um, heavy metal music? I'm sure there is. There's <laughs> there's a band called Psycho Stick who does comedy metal, and they've done it for they've been around for many years. And they actually put out a Christmas album like back in 2006, nice. something like that. Nice. It's hilariously awesome. Like every December, it's only like a 15 minute CD or EP, whatever you want to call it. But I play it all the time. Hey, it's that if it makes you happy, then it's the right thing to listen to while you cook. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I don't, I, it's either a death metal, like some good rock, like, you know, some 311 and some toadies mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff too. Mm -hmm. But it yep. just depends on what kind of mood I'm in, you know? Yeah, not that well, I, I mean... I'm happy either way. It's not like I I'm put on big, death metal when I'm mad. It's like, no, death metal makes me happy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer in set the mood the way that you want and the love and the energy, you know, if it's right, then you'll transfer it into food. And you can always taste when somebody's cooking with love, you know? So it's always taste that much better because you're going to put the care into it. Um, yeah, it puts yeah. a smile on your face. It's Absolutely. like I, it's, it's kind of like I say, you know, if it puts a smile on my face, it's gonna put a smile on your face, unless you're just dead inside and a complete <laughs> asshole, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. So some foods of the first Thanksgiving, I, I don't know how you feel, how you would feel about these now, but at the very first, what they consider to be the first Thanksgiving meal in 1621 in Plymouth. Um, now they think that Spanish settlers made it to St. Augustine. 60 years before, but would have had something similar because all the same things available in that the sandy soil along the coast, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they would have had lobster, assorted types of fish, um, like bass, mussels, Ooh. clams, venison, oysters, eel, corn, squash, and maple syrup. What do you think? You lost me with the corn, but you got me with everything else. <laughs> Well, but you can't again, not have the corn because they were companion planting it with the squash. Or, like, as, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. as people like to say, maize. Maize, which is... No, I'd, I'd be all about it, yeah. Like, I yeah. love seafood. So, like, you know, that, all that sounds really good. I, I'm i surprised. They, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure they didn't think about eating, like, frog legs and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I'd be all about that, too. Yeah. I mean, I think it probably... Not to say Very that Very random didn't. and wild card, Yes. <laughs> it's not to say that people weren't eating frog legs before the French started cooking them, but I think the French had this special way of, um, you know, butter, cream, and white wine to make them taste really, really, really good. <laughs> it's like, what were they, what was a fricassee before people knew it was a fricassee, you know? <laughs> like, what was a cream sauce, right? But they probably had assorted types of fowl, but sadly, no turkey. So. It's hard to imagine. The Swanson yeah. Company popularized turkey. I was just about to say, in what year? Uh, well, I know that in the 1940s, they were they overestimated how many people were going to want turkeys, and that's how we ended up with the Thanksgiving TV dinners. They had to do something with them before, so they didn't go back. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. You know, that sounds know very, very spot on. 
<laughs> but I have a different theory. What is it? Aliens. <laughs> aliens. Ah, yes. Uh, <laughs> aliens yes. are the aliens. reason why we have turkeys <laughs> for Thanksgiving. <laughs> No, I yeah, I I remember reading that fact, you know, like it was just over commercialized and you know, like it's just a way for these companies to like sell a ton of turkeys. But yeah, you're right. What do you do with all the stuff that people didn't buy? Yeah, yeah. TV dinners yeah. and I, I I'm it sure that it didn't hurt. They sold 10 million TV dinners, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that they were good back then, but they just don't have the same ring as you know, like leftovers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you had to I pick mean, between leftovers and TV dinner, what would you do? Look at me. What? Granted, you, now they're both kind of like TV dinner is kind of like leftovers, but still. Well, I think they used to be more like leftovers. Now they're extremely mass produced because they're made for the microwave. But back then they were in foil trays and they were flash frozen in a different way because they were expecting people to cook them for 20 to 30 minutes in the oven. They weren't necessarily a convenience food. They were like an alternative food, you know? Yeah. So I bet they tasted amazing. You know, on some level, it was like you bought somebody else's leftovers, but now the TV dinner is like completely different. A frozen dinner, right. is a completely different thing. Um, yeah. If I had the choice, I would choose leftovers. And if it leftover, what though? It depends. <laughs> like, right. I also What's have this favorite thing to do with leftover Thanksgiving. <clears throat> Uh, carrot cake for breakfast with coffee the next day is a big favorite. Um, that could be a couple of meals. It could be breakfast and lunch. Uh, I like to, I'm not the person that repurposes the leftovers. I'll just keep eating Thanksgiving <laughs> until it's gone. I love so, to repurpose stuff. I, I mean, I like to as well. It's just like, it usually just doesn't happen that way. Usually I'll just have three or four more plates of Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. Oh uh, my I'm gosh. not reinventing those things. <laughs> I have to share a story with you now. So right when I moved to Midland, we were it was the first Thanksgiving we had in Midland. Mm -hmm. And we were in our, in our apartment and we were watching PBS and it was something about like, you know, getting together with for, with friends for Thanksgiving, you know, it's magical blah 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 blah. Yeah. What yeah. do you do with the leftovers? And this lady she made a soup, but she got everything and put it into a pot now i get it you know like that's you know you're utilizing everything but no she's getting like tape like plate scraps like that from people's plates and putting it into a pot that's how you get and hepatitis she, we're not doing that right no. Oh, no. And, and so she's throwing gross. the pumpkin pie in there she's throwing no. like everything in this giant pot and filling it up with water and just letting it go low and slow overnight and so like the following day they, they taste and they're like, oh, this is so good. You have subtle notes of pumpkin. And I'm like, oh, that's uh, disgusting. You just had. So like, gross. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I really hope that every, like all the plate scraps that she got were like, no one was sick. No one had like bad breath or like some sort of, you know, gum disease or something like that. Because then. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Uh. It, I tell that story. <laughs> every year because it just grosses me out and of course you look at the lady and she just looks like a like like she looks like a hippie and that's cool but like even hippies would be like that's disgusting you know <laughs> and i just i could not get over it, it the well, memory haunts me my wife and i still talk about that and laugh that's just nightmare fuel man i can't believe that um yeah. Food for thought cast disclaimer. Please don't scrape your guest plates into a pot to make um, soup. Just don't. We're do going to use everything. Just, just save the turkey carcass and make a nice broth. If you got dogs, go, just go give it to the dogs. Just, just like, now the mm. dogs don't care. Mm. My dogs care. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, no, thank you. <laughs> I think my dogs now would be a little bit slow to get to it. But like, if my wiener dog Coney was still alive, oh, he he wouldn't even think twice. He'd just go head face first into the <laughs> scraps, and he'd eat it until they were all gone. Even if he was a fat little round sausage, he would eat it. Mm. Mm. My dogs are rescues, and um, somebody somebody really did well with them beforehand because they don't. I've tried to offer them table scraps, like a little piece here and there, and they're just like, no, that's okay. We want dog treats. So I, I got lucky with them. Um, Steve, 
man, tell us where we can find you online. If you're going to find me, find me on social media, which is the chef Steven Gonzalez, or you can go to the, to the gram, the TikToks, or the Twitters under the name Chef Stigans. Okay. I don't know how you spell that, but it sounds kind of cool. <laughs> or just, you know, go to chefstevengonzalez.com and talk food to a website that I don't really pay too much attention to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you will if people start talking to you on there. Yes. That's what that's what has to happen. I think yeah, yeah. I, I need to be better I need to be better about that. I'm honest. Well, we super hope that everybody is having an amazing Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this the day after, that's awesome because you should be focused on whatever you're doing on Thanksgiving Day. If you don't celebrate, happy um, last you know Thursday in November to you. Um, <laughs> whatever whatever you do, uh, won't you share with us your favorites, the regional differences, your best recipes? your least liked items, right? Just um, come shout at us, the Food for Thought Cast on Facebook and Instagram. Your recipes. Won't you share your recipes with us? Um, yeah, tell us why. Tell us why we're wrong about, well, actually we're not wrong about anything, but yeah, tell us why, tell us what made your Thanksgiving delicious. But anywho, um, for Steve, I'm Melissa, signing off. That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought Cast, make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thought Cast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thoughtcast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com where you can link to all podcast players or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.